Hello again, Akron fans. This is Shadow Fury three 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 with a match between Vikran and Kitan. We casted a lot of matches between these two about a week ago, and I'm gonna do one more here. So Vikran is okay. Vikran and Kitan have reversed their usual roles. Vikran is going for Grekim while Kitan is going for CISO. Kitan, of course, is more frequently a Grekim player, while Vikran is pretty much an everything player. Actually, he likes to play random a lot. But he does typically play CISO the best. If he's in a tournament or anything, he will probably be playing CISO. So it looks like Kitan is using Vikran's old 3RP and 1 importer strategy with a factory pretty soon for ATHC rush. And Vikran is going to be setting up a counter. My guess is that this game was designed for testing out the balance of this, figuring out how powerful the ATHC rush and MAR rush actually is. See if Vikran can figure out a counter to it. Because very common and useful tactic for balance testing is to test out both what happens with the strategy just in general, and what happens when you switch the players. you got to keep the players as basically a control variable. You want to make sure that the player's skill itself is not what's causing the problem. So if something is imbalanced, something is really overpowered, then having the players switch, having it be both players trying the same strategy against each other, but flipping the roles, that will make it clear whether or not it's ma a matter of player skill or a matter of simply there's a balance problem. So it's very interesting and very informative as to how much of a balance problem there might be. So here we see that we have Kitan building up his first factory, his proxy factory, and we have Vikarin. What is he up to? He's at the same time or so, getting his economy going, not going for... Well, he's going for an early octopod, getting the resource processor for QP, so he can build an early octopod if he wants to. That'd be the best idea, of course. And Vikarin and Kitan didn't do it exactly the way Vikran did. Vikran would usually have the factory inside his main base. Kitan is going for a proxy factory instead, which will be interesting to see how it plays out. However, I don't... I mean, it's a small timing difference. We'll see if it makes a difference in terms of defense, but really, the real core of the strategy is the Mar tanks. That's where it becomes problematic. The ATCs are really just there to cover for the Mar tanks until they get there, but the Mar tanks are what's going to be dealing with the real damage. It's going to be taking Grekim down. So, right now, Octopus coming in, taking out the Special Ops and Marine without any real losses. So he's able to quite nicely defend everything here. And the Octo is setting up for... Looks like he's going to Progen and Seppi, use that to get a Reef, and then from there probably get Tech. Or no, sorry, get Healing at first, and then from there get Tech once he's in a safer position. So right now, there's an HHC coming in, two HHCs coming in. Kitan will be going for attack momentarily. He actually has his HHCs... Hierarchy up to the special ops. I'm a bit surprised they aren't. Oh, oh, shoot! That sucks. He put his HHCs. He got to move his HHCs around. He put the factory in a bad spot. He's gonna have to go back and replace that. The HHCs are now kind of stuck between the factory and this wall here, and they aren't really sure they can't get through. So Kitan's gonna have to go change that up. Not sure if he's gonna actually recognize that and fix it. I kind of hope he does though, because that would suck if this just fell apart because. Kitan places factory in a slightly wrong place. So I think Kitan realizes what's going on. He is moving his... No, his HHCs are stuck. That's not just a pathfinding problem. That is... The factory's in the wrong spot. There's nothing that can be done about it. So Kitan is going back and changing where he places the factory because his HHCs... No! Needs to undo! Needs to undo. Go back. And put that in the right spot. There we go. So now the HHCs will be able to get out and join the fight. This actually was interesting because it means that... Kitan will be hitting that close to the unplayable past edge, so it'll be harder for Vikram to actually defend against this, but I don't know how that'll work out ultimately. I don't think it'll be a big difference. Like I said, though, I'm guessing some reef will be coming up, and there's the HHCs we saw before. Don't ignore those. They are not relevant. They are not going to exist. Different HHCs are going to exist once that factory gets built up. So Vikram at the three-minute mark has a reef going up, so he will be able to heal up. He will be able to protect himself trying to build up this little force he's got going, the Octopod, for defense. And once that's done, then we'll see what happens with the ATHCs. Now, of course, like I said, the core of the strategy is the ATHCs to cover the construction of the Macrofab and then the construction of Mar tanks. Kitan, however, is not going heavily for QP, but it looks like he's a Marine in position to build QPRPs once he gets a bit more cash, once he has a bit more secure position to build that. He still needs those QPRPs, though, quite a bit, actually. But we'll see what happens, and Vikran actually jumping back to the pillow past edge. Looks like Kitan is waiting until he gets his ATCs out before he goes forward with the Special Ops and Marine, which will give 
Vicar in a bit better chance to set himself up and set his project progen going and get his reef going and possibly even get tech going if he gets the money for it in time. Kitan, however, from his point of view, that the well, he was about three seconds up from here. He does have an ATC up. Second ATC is coming along, and they are now attacking all together. Well, it will be. They're very slowly moving forward. He's not on priority move, and he does have a QPRP building up. So Kitan will be able to get the QP needed in about three minutes or so to get a macro fab unless he builds another QPRP. And here comes the main attack. And like I said, Kitan has left Vikran a bit more of a chance to prepare. And it looks like these ATCs will be fended off quite handily. The Reef and Octopod mix just... That's the defense. That's how you're defending against the ATHCs. The main thing, of course, is covering for the mech, which is going to be building the Macrofab. And Kitan, I don't think, is going to get enough QP in time to be able to build a Macrofab to be intimidating. I'm actually a bit surprised he went for the Proxy Factory in the first place. Not totally because, of course, of the timing, but I'm still a bit surprised just because Proxy Factory is not easy to really pull off. And it looks like... Oh, the Octopod will actually be taken down. Oh, wow. Or, no one. The Octopod will barely survive. Enough reefs are in place, and Kitan is running away with the ATHCs. Vikran has not expanded, by the way. He is maintaining himself in one base with the few RPs that he has, and Kitan, as well, is also sticking with his few RPs, not expanding anymore. Note that Vikran would actually send a Marine to the south and to the north when he was doing this. So I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Like I said, I don't think... I don't imagine small details like that are going to be hugely important. And here's that mech. The star of the show going to be building a proxy macrofab as soon as the money comes in. Which it's not going to anytime soon, unfortunately. He really does need to have... it. Okay, it's kind of tough timing. Really, there were two ATHCs. The thing is that one ATHC here is going to be a bit problematic. Kitan could have used that money to build the QPRP here and then have a faster macrofab. So Vikran actually has the chance to get advanced structures, get air units, and actually defend this. So I'm not sure how useful this will be as a real test of how powerful the ATHC Mar Rush is compared to potential Grecan defense. I mean, Vikarin is doing a very good job defending against this. But Kitan also, I think, overspent a bit on ATHCs. No, I don't think. He overspent on ATHCs. He could have used that for a faster macrofab, for a faster QPRP to get a faster macrofab. And then from there, use that to just build up the Mar tanks that he needs. So at this point, Vikarin has a great defense going. And he has enough money, he could actually, or getting close to enough money to be able to build up advanced structures. Certainly trying to, as you can see he is getting non of resources from the reef. Because he's trying to get advanced structures there. There we go, there it is. So Vigorant now getting advanced structures, he will be able to get air units fairly soon. And Kitan almost has enough money for that macrofab. Jumping forward his point of view, and it looks like he... No, he doesn't. i surprised he doesn't have that money, but he is almost there. He is trying to get it built from the mech, and there we go. The proxy macrofab built up at the 550 mark. Probably should double check against the cast that I did with Kitan and Vikarin, where Vikarin was in the CISO role. See what the timing was there. But I don't... I don't think this will work out. Vikarin already has air units now. He has, essentially, the counter for Martanks. The Martanks are really only scared if they come in around 4 minutes, four, maybe 5 minutes or so. But at the 6 or 7 minute mark, getting air units is not infeasible. It's not even that difficult. It's just... It's going to be a bit tricky. And also, Vikran has this nice little SimCity here, so the Martank's going to have... They're going to be hitting the, the reefs before they hit anything else. And the HT's coming in from the south, attacking the... Bizarrely attacking the Arcticus, but he is attacking the Arcticus. And this will not last long. These This Octopod is being healed up by all of the reefs, so it's not going to have any real chance of losing. The HTCs are doing hardly any damage, and like I said, it's a distraction for... The mech to work. That third HUC really could have become an RP sooner, but the macro fab is almost done. So Kitan, once that's done, will start building Mar tanks, and from there, I don't even know if one Mar tank will do. Three or four Mar tanks would probably do the trick, but by that point, you have a Farapod. As Vikran is building a Farapod right now at the 651 mark, Vikran actually slightly ahead of here. His Farapod is almost done at the seven minute mark. It'll be about the seven ten mark when it's done, and or seven fifteen mark actually. And now that Farpod will defend. There, that's it. I mean, this Farpod might be out of position, though it is harassing the main base, but it can defend. This is very important, because it can defend. And here comes that first Martank, though. Here it comes, and we see that the Farpod is actually already out of position. So Vikran could just keep this, this Farpod here. He has enough chrono energy to do so. So 
you might just keep it here and use that to attack the Martank. Because there are no detectors, there's... I'm sorry, the, the ATCs are detectors, so there are detectors, but there's no dedicated anti-air units, and those detectors are going to die. The ATCs are nicely clumped up, so the Farpod will splash damage them to death, and the Farpod, of course, will heal up from the reefs, so he is taking a lot of damage, though. And the Autobot dealing with the Martank as well, the Martank dealing with damage it can. Second Martank coming up. Now, this is where it might be a turning point, but I kind of doubt it. these ATCs doing what they can and doing a fair amount of damage against the Farpod, but the Reefs are healing it up quickly enough that it does not matter much. And the Martank coming in close enough, actually attacking the Farpod for some bizarre reason. And this Farpod has taken care of all the ATCs. Now there are no detectors here, and the Martank will be going down in a hurry. So Kitan... Well, Kitan I don't think just did fast enough. He he tried, but they had the one extra ATC and the one in the proxy factory might not have been a great idea. I mean, I don't know if he was trying to improve on Vickerin's build or if he was had just did it wrong, but I think it looks like it looks like the timing does matter. It looks like actually the small details do matter in this case. And yeah. At this point, Kain has to try to figure out a way out of this. He's got he does have a macrofab, he does have a fair amount of money, and this macrofab can, of course, build frigates. So, at this point, I would say frigates frigates with ATHC support would be his best choice. Frigates don't require machinery, by the way, they are just 8244, and he has the money for this. So, I'd be a bit surprised if he didn't go for that. Also, this mech. This mech is anti air. I'm Use it. But yeah, the frigates are the best option he has right now. Now, Vikran, it looks like he's going for more for Farah Pods than Sebi Pods, so anti-air, air anti-air will be the best option. These reefs are going to be the biggest problem. So at this point, Kaiden, his best bet will be to try to expand around the map, try to get himself a good position, try to make sure to keep the far pods in, just keep Vikran contained, so that when Vikran runs out of money, then he can just rush in. Now, he might be able to get enough forces to deal with it beforehand, but really at this point, the far pods are the only real threat Vikran has. He focused very heavily on these guys, he did not focus on economy, and if some frigates were built up, that would be great for getting rid of the Farpods. Around the, if there were frigates around with the ATHCs, that would deal with the Farpods in no time. Unfortunately, there aren't. And as a result, there's nothing really available that's great anti-air. ATHCs are good anti-air, but they're not great anti-air. And Farpods are bombers, and you need great anti-air to deal with bombers well. Especially when you have a reef support nearby. That's just hard to deal with. The only real saving grace right now was that the Faropod was not the only thing being attacked. But now it is, so really the Reefs are just able to heal it up without any issue at all. Vikrant is now in a wonderful spot, absolutely wonderful spot. The only downside, like I said, is that he has a hard time really getting out. But he is trying to, he is making sure that Kitan does not know what's going on here, trying to distract him with Farapaws in the main base. And the main attacks, of course, aren't doing much. Kitan's very focused on taking down that main base. And he is getting a frigate, good. I'm glad to see that. He does have a frigate. He could use a couple more and cut some more ATHCs. I would not recommend getting machinery quite yet. This is the main base is under attack. He has no importers and he is really actually in a, bit, he's in a tight spot right now. And Kaiden actually decides he's too tight of a spot. He shall surrender. So that was the game. It's a short game. Interesting demonstration of a good Grecum defense, but I I'm still a bit suspicious that it might not be enough. That being said, the next release of the game will switch around the rules of Mars and Twin Mars. So the Mars will now be just anti-ground shock troops, while the Twin Mars will be the splash artillery. So I don't even think this is that... It's not that relevant, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see what happens, what what Vikran would do in response to Kitan's move. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that's going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching, everyone, and have a good night.